because the traffic is absolutely awful in Kiev today. So what the agenda are for today? We are working uh, in the following mode. We are going to listen to the speakers. They are going to tell and share their vision of this issue in their own field, what trends they can observe in their sectors. And then we will start a discussion and then we will open the floor for questions. So the speakers have up to 10 minutes. Well, maybe some people will make the PowerPoint presentation, some people are not going to do those. And please don't abuse the time, because we know that time is money, and you know how to count the money. So let us give the floor to Mr. Igor Gumenoy, the owner and the president of the UBC Group Holding and the founder of the Association of Ukrainian Entrepreneurs. And then the next is going to be Ines Kardemara. Oh, good morning. I am Igor Gumenoy, UBC Group. UBC Group is a company which manufactures refrigerators. And to make my contribution to this discussion, I'd like to start with the following. Prime Minister today told us that the Ukrainian economy is growing 3%. It's better than the recession in 2015. But when we are looking to where we are moving and where we would like to find ourselves, this is a very limited growth. It's not sufficient. But to properly move in the proper direction, we need not 3% growth, but we need the growth of two-digit growth to be able to uh, catch up with our neighbors. And only business can do that. This 3% gave us, well, we achieved through our internal resources. We are the company which is exporting uh, the products. Uh, the sales in Ukraine have decreased, and our sales have decreased by 80%. So 95% or 90% of our products is being exported. And in accordance with the topics of this meeting, well, we can tell the story of our business here. And I'd like to underscore that uh, not too many changes have occurred. To, to change change things if in the economy we have to create appropriate conditions in the country because a business could be compared to a virus it, it develops uh, when the conditions and the environment is enabling for it and if we go back to the agenda and to the topics which have been discussed here i'd like to demonstrate the first slide to you and this is where you can see the attitude of the business to the state. 58% of the company, of the entrepreneurs, in accordance with the poll, believe that the state is an obstacle. And then let us discuss the topics. The first one, infrastructure. And the, there is infrastructure in this country, but is at the very primitive level. Uh, what can we tell us about the infrastructure? Well, if we we are bi building a plant in Vinitsa, but I cannot get there uh, unless I have to travel to Kiev. I have to fly from Odessa to Kiev and then from uh, and then to Vinitsa. And uh, until we develop the horizontal ties and connections, well, we won't be able to develop. We look like a primitive country where everything is uh, concentrated in Kiev. We have a business in, in America, in uh, Europe. We have in St. Louis so, oh, office. Uh, and I never think that I have to travel from St. Louis to Denver, where the the, central, the headquarters of the Usla company is located. I'd never go through Washington. St. Louis is actually a small city, and one can fly to any city of the United States. And from Munich to Stuttgart, one can take a train or plane. And this is infrastructure. And the biggest problem of the infrastructure is 
uh, well, entrepreneur wants to connect to the uh, grid. It's not possible to do it in Ukraine in a simple way. We are building a plant in Vinnytsia. We started to work to construct there because the local uh, authorities guaranteed us to be connected to the grid. And the governor and the mayor of the city are resolving our problem. And even they could not resolve the issues with our energy sector. They either uh, uh, proposed us to to build a substation and uh, to put them on their books or to connect us to a different substation 15 kilometers from us. But then other people came us and we have the limits and they tell us how much they will charge for us because uh, it will uh, and only the personal interference of Groisman gave us an opportunity to get connected to the grid. No businessmen from the other countries uh, uh, will need the uh, assistance from the local government authorities or prime minister. They want to work on their own. We have an experience in Riga. We built a restaurant and a brewery there, and it's across the road from the president's palace. Uh, and to uh, connect to get connected to the grid two companies came to us and we were uh, bargaining with them as far as the price for electricity is concerned and other conditions they provide us everything and this is the difference between us and our neighbors and when the foreign investors look at this situation they look at these very simple things first of all the tariffs uh, in ukraine energy sector exists for its own sake the energy generating companies or all, all the companies uh, distribution companies uh, generating green energy companies uh, all of them are individual uh, business entities which have their representatives in the parliament and uh, they are owned by those uh, uh, councillors uh, and uh, they establish the tariffs and then we pay for them. And we start to pay in accordance with these uh, tariffs and then we pay for the population as well, for the households. And then the business is required to export, to decrease the prices uh, and if all these issues are not addressed, then I don't know how the economy is going to develop strategically p with the next five years period. The next issue is the taxation. <laughs> this chart, which you can see here, this we have been working in 26 countries of the world. We have offices in 26 countries of the world. And he, there is a chart, and uh, here you can see how much taxes we are paying in different countries. If we look at this chart, it, it seems that uh, only Kazakhstan is better than Ukraine in uh, out of the countries where we work. But in reality, it's okay. These are the wage bill taxes when we are talking. Well, this is about uh, entering the official sector of the economy and the moving out of the gray economy. But if we want the investor to come here, Ukraine should, be, should look much better in this uh, chart. The next phase, and this is for customs for the uh, foreign economic activities. This is a very simple issue. We are working in Georgia. And Georgia is the nearest example. I'm not going to tell you about the United States. In Georgia, we started to work when uh, it was necessary to attach $100 to your tax uh, declaration, a tax return. But the reforms have been carried out so quickly there that just overnight, uh, everything started to work properly and everything is done in electronic mode. I'm not going to waste your time to tell you how it is being done. It's simple. It is. Uh, it needs to be introduced, but not to create the obstacles and the hinders. If you look at this slide, it, it's a comparison of Ukraine with our neighbors. Un our conditions are twice as bad as in Russia to do business. Uh, 
And th these are quite accessible materials which are being published for the foreign investors. Ukraine is not going to be attractive if we even are uh, on the same level as Poland is. We have to be advanced, uh, uh, advanced, uh, more advanced than, than uh, they are. We have to find the resources and opportunities uh, to improve our indicators uh, in, in comparison with Poland. I started uh, from the statement that business is like a flu virus and it's a sort of a uh, you know culture in which the virus is developing when the conditions are enabling in ukraine the all the components of this environment are present uh, and we have to start uh, to work in this direction the government has to think of how to properly uh, create this uh, business environment and the business has to work proactively and this is a reality, we can do it. And an example uh, could be, our company could be used as an example. We have not privatized anything. Everything we have constructed, all our plants have been constructed in Ukraine. And at present we have two plants in Kharkiv. And the area is 120,000 square meters. We are building a plant in Vinitsa. And all the resources are of Ukrainian origin. All the components are of Ukrainian origin. The uh, workers, the engineers, the soul is Ukrainian resource. Time is pressing. OK, I will finish on the optimistic note. I'm going to screen a video to you. Uh, annually, we make a video. When we come in pa to Panama, we always tell that we are from Ukraine. and. Uh, the Ukraine uh, is uh, the country where, in accordance with the rating of Microsoft, uh, we train more engineers than in Germany, and uh, we <laughs> are the fourth uh, country in terms of uh, being an economy, which IT economy, which has. Uh, the fourth uh, scope of outsourcing. Uh, th we are the country which constructed the biggest plane in the world, which manufactures uh, the uh, m missiles for the sea launch program project. And we can uh, definitely uh, uh, manufacture good refrigerators. Ukraine has all these opportunities, uh, but we need to do that. And all the recipes are there. Thank you very much for this optimistic uh, start of this conversation. And uh, uh, finally, Mr. Andrei Gunder have uh, broken through uh, all the traffic jams in Kiev. So the, the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon, all of you. American Chamber of Commerce uh, for 25 years has been working in Ukraine. 25 years ago, it was just uh, in one year after the uh, Declaration of Independence, the embassies were opening their offices here, and then big business started to come to Ukraine. 25 years ago, they have consolidated around the Chamber of Commerce. It's the American Chamber of Commerce. We have 600 companies as members who are the members, 30% uh, are American companies, and all the rest are big international companies and all good Ukrainian companies as well. Our goal is, we have three goals. First of all, B2G. That is to make business heard by the government authorities. We have 15 committees who are very much specialized, and each committee is working in certain directions. But the most important goal is to make the business heard by the government. It's the voice of the business. Today, we have been to the Office of General Prosecutor, and we have signed together with the Association of Ukrainian Entrepreneurs and the European Business Association, we have signed a letter of orientation uh, and uh, about the issues which was of concern to the business when the men in balaclavas uh, with the arms are bro breaking uh, into the office to look for some document of the tax administration. Today, the prosecutor general uh, in front of the cameras of two national uh, channels, television channels, signed a declaration and uh, they promised uh, to to deliver on this agreement. Uh, 
the business and the government now has the best uh, uh, relations. Uh, we have a dialogue with Viktor Golosyuk and, and Verkhovna Rada and Cabinet of Ministers and President's administri uh, administration. The President asked us to tell what the business wants. Uh, at present time, is very interesting. On the 30th of September, we have published the results of the poll. That is the Institutional Investor Publications. They polled 200 foundations, and that was a very simple question. Which countries during the next 12 months you are going to visit? And Ukraine hold the first place. It shows that the companies and the funds lo looking at Ukraine. That was before the 3 billion euro bonds which have been placed the uh, previous week. So now the investors definitely look at Ukraine. Three years ago, the situation was very different. Three years ago, Ukraine was removed from the international uh, uh, plans uh, for development of the companies or the plans for investment. But at present, when we can see the economic growth, which has been restored, maybe two, three percent, that is not much. But the companies are looking at Ukraine. And even when I'm looking at my schedule, I can see what sort of companies now are coming to Ukraine. And this time is very important to demonstrate the investors that Ukraine is prepared to accept the investment, that it's possible to work in Ukraine, to earn money in Ukraine, and it is possible to be successful. We see in reality that well, for example, the week before last, President, <coughs> President uh, Poroshenko visited New York. And the meeting with the President Trump, uh, well, during that meeting, President Trump didn't say much. But he said to the President of Ukraine that at present the companies are looking uh, to Ukraine and they are trying to enter Ukraine. And he said that, uh, well, take care of them. Take care of them. And now, we can see among our companies uh, there are uh, some positive developments within the last three years. For example, reimbursement uh, uh, re of uh, the VAT, especially for the agro companies, traders, two years ago, five years ago. Well, uh, the, biggest, uh, the biggest problem in the agrarian sector was the reimbursement of VAT. Now, the new uh, procedure of electronic reimbursement of VAT has been uh, implemented. And, uh, well, the situation has changed in reality drastically. There are still a lot of issues to be addressed. And the companies at present, the companies with which we are working, are thinking how to continue to develop. And it is very important now uh, to establish good cooperation between the government, the parliament, to be able to demonstrate that these reforms are taking place. What the investors are, uh, investors are apprehensive of, uh, political instability. This is a very specific question. Political instability, uh, well, the, m awful, the most awful dream for the director who decided to invest in Ukraine is that uh, when you, you issue a press release that you are starting to invest in Ukraine, and then uh, this investor gets an information that the government has changed, or maybe there is some pub uh, well, un unrest in the streets. And uh, From our point of view, It is very important to disseminate this information and uh, to tell a lot success stories. Uh, the companies which are working here successfully and they have to be shared and so that other investors could hear them and see them. Examples, and there are a lot of good companies and this panel uh, which deals with infrastructure, taxes and financing well, we can see that in infrastructure at present, uh, the most important thing is to approve the law on concessions. The EBRD has financed uh, well the preparation of the draft of this law. And uh, it is very important to pass this law so that the companies could invest into the port infrastructure. Last month, we visited Odessa. And Cargill Company is investing at present $150 million in the deep sea port in Yuzhny. And uh, at present, they are dredging the bottom of uh, the bay so that the big ships could enter. And this is the infrastructure which gives a lot of opportunities uh, for trade. 
uh, with the rest of the world. There are a lot of issues with the railroad and uh, with the Dnieper River, whether it is possible uh, to uh, to restore the Dnieper River as uh, the waterway for trade. And, uh, well, uh, there are seven uh, locks which are to be reconstructed and also to dredge this, uh, the uh, bottom of the river uh, to, to use the river as the trading water artery. And the investors are looking at Ukraine now, realistically. We do not have uh, um, big contracts, new contracts uh, within the last 12 months. But now the, there is a lot of expressions of interest. And uh, it is important to prove that Ukraine is capable of accepting the investors. And the companies, which was, is represented by Yuri, is a very good success story. The investors do not look for the privileges. They look for fairness, for equity. And if the companies which w who are working here are treated equitably, they will be the best ambassadors of Ukraine. And they will tell the rest of the world that it is possible to be successful, make money in Ukraine, and operate properly. It's not just the investors who are looking in Ukraine not just the advantages, but fairness and justice. This is something true for the political field in the actual economy. Thank you, we're moving on. And this is Gardevoir, which is uh, Deputy Director of Tatra U Company. Thank you, I represent Tatra U Company. For 24 years, uh, we've been working on building tram carriages in Ukraine. And actually, uh, our truth carriages have a parade operation in many places. So recently we started exporting it. We've been we are now exporting it to Egypt, to Alexandria and also we participate in parallel in Asian tenders in two of them. And uh, actually if I participate in that and uh, as a pract as a practitioner I think that it is going to be totally differentiated from the theory and something that was presented in the first panel but such very uh, important uh, figures but actually everything matches I'll just move over the steps that we already discussed that's about the infrastructure and to confirm how important it is today there were these words from the Nobel Prize winner Mr. Pachuri that Ukraine needs to develop transport actually and the energy field as well and he is stressed on it and it's not by chance and I think that uh, this being late because of traffic jams is also not by accident I'm going to talk about public transport because this is the transport that we use much more often that not all of us needs to go to Vina Tsetariv every day and every day we need uh, to actually get to our workplace and the first uh, slogan which is important and I think that this should be taken into account in the development of business as well that that infra urban infrastructure matters and that it has to develop not just from the point of logistics for the enterprises and not just for the possibilities and quickness of um, uh, communications connection for the enterprise but first of all there should be an accent placed on improving the mobility of the population in the conditions of urbanization and the uh, overpopulation which in the cities which you have now in Ukraine here we see the statistics and why it is important to do because the investments into public transport create actually 25 percent plus more jobs than the investments into road construction for example and plus with the rather uh, active use of public transport every year per person up to 600 liters of fuel is actually uh, saved up so something that was mentioned in the economy of the resources and infrastructure networks uh, keeping in the good state this that all plays an important role below you can see the graphs on the state of infrastructure in ukraine this is statistics of the ministry of infrastructure and during the last seven to ten years we have less passengers 33 percent less including the fact that the, all the 
transport which has been participating in moving the passengers has become outdated. So here it is also important to stress that uh, the cities, first of all, locally and on the level of the society, should actually initiate uh, this renewal and the whole infrastructure so that at least each could get uh, from point A to point B in time. There was, would be a kind of saving up time, saving other resources, also including material ones. And then another important thing would be the taxes. And here I would like to draw some examples as a practitioner from what we've been facing in the activities, also including export, because as has been said by my colleague, just look at the ranking of doing business in other countries. I mean, you can look not just at that, but also how they treat local producers, what would be the preferences, preference including the taxation, what uh, kind of preference have the local producers have. So what has been shown by the statistics, Polish producers of uh, carriages, our competitor received his time after the crisis of 2008, the tax preferences and was actually exempt uh, from income tax for five years. And as an example, this Poland actually uh, all these uh, uh, expenses for research and development business enterprises all this there's a special evaluation and payment uh, for all this and actually uh, it's for innovational activities of the enterprises and uh, I will make I will accentuate on that because now we are uh, facing it rather close because our competitors uh, they are going to international markets and actually using expert financing and um, giving loans to procurement on the international markets and unfortunately our Exim Bank uh, cannot afford this uh, just recently created and just to be created a credit export agency for now hasn't received enough authority to at least uh, ensure the risks and support the exporters in this field and uh, uh, actually I would like to have shown you this one alternative step which is very Chris Hawk true to the positions which were uh, already uh, voiced about liberalizing and protectionism. Uh, there is a widespread opinion that the markets are to be absolutely open for everyone, but also there is statistics and the statistics is presented by Global Competitiveness Report, which also shows the level of protectionism among the, the G20 countries and each country has this level since 2008, it has been growing every year. And then there is a comparison liberalizing measures and protectionism. So you can see here that you can declare total openness of the market or you can declare that international markets are waiting for our goods and they're expecting our capital there. But in the graph you can see that all developed countries, including the US, Brazil, Germany, you could see that on the previous graphs, they have been introducing much more protection also than the, the liberalized this market. For example, to participate in US standards for supplying, you have to have this local component of 75%. So that means that uh, we have to build our own plant in the US to go to the to get to this market the same way the same policy is actually led by all the countries both Europe and Asia including the Philippines just recently we participate in the tender there and there is an obligatory condition local component and uh, of course localizing the production so finishing my speech I would like to say that the, some important reforms have been done 
including the reform and the law on 35%, for example, of component Ukrainian, I don't know, executives would has to which have to be in Ukrainian language in the state language, or for example, 60% of radio should be, should be in Ukrainian. But at the same time, Ukrainian goods, Ukrainian merchandise, which also have to be at least supported on this state level, they do not get this encouragement and support <laughs> on the state and government level. I want to finish on a positive note, but we'll still have the time, you know? We still have time for discussion and we'll probably come to something positive in the end, because uh, remember in this crisis of 2008, yes, a lot of expert uh, circles and uh, Western partners, they just called for Ukraine and uh, actually uh, this is go we should actually hold these doors open even though there are lots of talks to about protecting our th things so actually Yuri Stratenko head of supervision board of Ux expertise in construction the floor is yours uh, okay uh, today we actually talked about transport infrastructure that any business that starts there it should start from these things because every business plan is built on something that we need to get some power energy resources water and gas resources transport resources so uh, actually when there is this uh, there is uh, a co combination of issues that is very hard to solve in Ukraine because we have a monopoly system for all energy resources and uh, plus gas and water then we face the fact that they sh could do whatever on their territories they have their own rules their own laws and after those the business can simply live or stop working uh, that's why uh, cabinet of ministers face this issue for many times and uh, like just like many people most people in the parliament supported the monopolies and there were their factions as well and uh, this is just yet another period when uh, you actually we can actually raise this issue and start moving those things that we've been discussing that in the current event we also have corruption plus additional requirements which are there for the enterprises so the law uh, 6671 which is something that we're trying to look at in the first reading in the parliament they propose an option which is used in europe and all the responsibility of uh, this engineer communications it just goes on the monopolist and this respons this responsibility is actually and if today we can now uh, see that they are not going to do any work we have this option about works by those who need to do this work and then they'll get the compensation uh, from the monopolist and this project today has been approved partially by the Verkhovna Rada and the cabinet of ministers, some of the ministries. So what are the main tasks there? Uh, the tasks are for the monopolists not to be able to leave from the tasks which are put up there so that the monopolist could not uh, support so propose other options corruption and all that so that's an additional option that was put up on certain websites and uh, also enable the business to solve all these issues which they have emerging and and this is something that should be supportive of the solutions a part of tasks are put up by the local council which should develop it if we are looking at the Soviet times, there were five year and three year periods 
where they planned the development of territories and there there were general plans, the capacities ahead so that we could put some kind of enterprise there or develop something in housing or social direction. Today all these tasks uh, the local government is not able to solve that so uh, law 6671 is designed to move it forward so that they do not digress and do not uh, leave uh, do not just stand behind the involvement of investors and just stand with it okay thank you Yuri Nestratenko that was his speech then marketing director at Metinvest Holding Roman Koroshin that floor is yours uh, good evening I'm representative of Metinvest Holding it's the biggest uh, mining company in Ukraine just a little bit a couple of words that should be said uh, our mining complex is a private field so we as for influence or state influence or participation is lacking but very often we still face the state which uh, sometimes uh, would help us with infrastructure the railway and all that but now i would like to continue and develop the statement that Igor has just made here they're trying to uh, say that three percent of economic growth is a kind of economic miracle but it was rightly said that this is a rather low uh, growth for our country and for the state in which our economy is so we have to show five to ten percent at least and to do this we need certain driver for growth and so it's driver for growth in all developing countries where the investments into the main capital and here we have this picture which is rather interesting on the one hand there is institutional investor that the investors in uh, portfolios and hedge funds there is something built to come to ukraine and then to see what kind of opportunities are emerging here there is interest in this country but then later when people start to look in closer to our reality and when they see that for example the investor writes how our course function and the level of corruption all that leads to the fact that for now we are not seeing any investment boom here and moreover in 2016 the share of investments into the main capital has fallen up to 15 percent and where talking about deindustrialization of the country actually we are falling apart as a country and falling apart as infrastructure and with such amount of investments into the main capital I mean we have physical degradation of your main networks and the main infrastructure roads and all that so if you really want to see economic growth and uh, investments in the main capital should be no less than 25 percent like China for several years has been shown 40 percent that's probably a very big number but this other Asian countries like uh, we shall always put up as an example the economic miracle they also show very high economic growth thanks to the investment and of course we need investment boom but we need to form the reforms how do we involve the investors when you say about ask the investors what pushes you away people are saying this corruption it is the state of judicial system so ensuring basic rights of the investor they don't want to invest in the country understanding that at any moment your business can be uh, simply be taken away or some some officials can come to you or tax people or other law enforcement even who can create a lot of problems for you so therefore coming back to the interaction between business and the state well infrastructure just recently I went to Kherson and at some moment the road just was over it was physically over and then there was just direction of movement but we're a big business we have a lot of uh, plants and mining all that all this lives exclusively through railway infrastructure and the topic of relations between U ukrainian rail company is very close to us we often face them and there are lots of uh, problems um, which just an example i'm just going to tell you when the war started and the main logistics chains were destroyed so we were forced to totally rebuild our logistics how do we take metal or iron or coal to our platforms and therefore we, there was a re reserve way which is now used for raw materials to our Mariupol platform so let's say that for almost two years we cannot uh, ask the Ukraine, Ukrainian state railway company to ensure these basic things in the volume that we want like instead of 16 uh, or 24 trains we are given 16 trains so we cannot have the load and we can't ensure the products in the volume that you want to 
and uh, actually we are saying about uh, the export uh, for and the currency rate, all these things that are rather on the agenda, and we can't simply achieve and uh, this, but we have to face the problems that occur the Liznitsia, the railway company doesn't have any carriages or somebody doesn't have the fuel or the locomotives, so actually it's rather scary to look into the future what's going to follow with all this infrastructure and everything, so it's <coughs> either we have to get uh, private operators through there and increase all that, the private operator probably should have to liberalize the locomotive market, but we have to work on this issue and if we're talking about serious production and loads and all that the same thing with the port infrastructure and here our po port uh, things are much higher and therefore in the background like of weak uh, conjunction of external markets we are facing these things when they uh, when the all this is falling but then all the infrastructure all this stays in the same parameters and if we're talking about taxes well actually they have showed here that if we look at them seriously, they are not too high, and of course you would want them to be smaller, that's always desirable, but actually the tax rates are reasonable, and I think that if we want to involve more investors, we can make them even lower, but but it's not about taxes, it's about administering them. I mean, the devil is in the details, when you start uh, dealing and the business that deals with administering the taxes, of course there is a problem, like it's about VAT compensation and all that. And uh, as for financing, uh, here, what I wanted to say, during the last 10 years we've been investing into our metallurgy business a bit less than 5 billion dollars and our strategy until 2030 says that we plan to invest 8.8 .8 billion dollars more into mining complexes and plants and factories and modernizing our assets and also extending our product portfolio. Ukraine, let's say, as there are no investments, our internal market is rather weak. So therefore, 75 product, uh, percent of the products we export. So we understand that to stay competitive on this market, we are forced uh, to do it. Because metallurgy needs a lot of capital. We have to invest to at least maintain our assets. 300 to 400 million uh, uh, a year to plus development program to go to the niche to get the products where we want to be present and earn some money for the on our capital. So we have a rather aggressive investment program which is planned for the following years and for this program that we have to involve the financing. As for capital market we don't have the internal ones, at least we don't even see the attempts to create it. Uh, at least uh, and uh, we, we are trying to work on that and therefore these companies like big private companies they have to go to the international market of the capital here the policy is given by the country risk, so if Ukraine is occupying up about 7%, then the private is it's even more expensive, so then the basic task would be to hold in this reasonable monetary policy to get rid of this country risk and to target in inflation, to decrease the percentage and to actually make the capital market, to create some internal capital market, so that not many big companies, but at least small or medium businesses had the access to this capital market so that they will be able to finance their investment projects using these interest rates. Uh, there is an interest to Ukraine. I meet investors quite often and they tell me that they would like to build objects here. But again, we have to go back to corruption, the judiciary, the rule of law and uh, the protection of the invest investors. Well, they create all the barriers between the investors and uh, the state. I would like to specify, when you were talking about the lack of uh, railroad cars, locomotives in Nukurzeliznitsa, was there, it, it, they really lack those railroad cars or is that sabotage so that maybe they are exerting some bribes and you put some lubricant on uh, the uh, wheels of the rolling stock? I don't think it's a sabotage. Uh, well, the mining sector and metallurgical sector uh, well uh, reports for 40% of uh, all the uh, transportation and uh, the agrarian uh, transportation is also very high and also allocation of the state owned cars for the agricultural sector is this well they have the same there is the same picture so the infrastructure is failing but it's not the implicit wish to exert the bribes. 
Well, we cannot uh, refuse from the services of the railroad, and we transport millions of tons of cargoes, but we can use automobile transportation, but it's very limited. Thank you, Viktor Golesuk, the president of the Ukrainian Association of Roman Club, the head of the Committee for from Industrial Policy and Entrepreneurship. Thank you for the invitation to participate in this forum. It's very p I'm very pleased uh, to be in uh, the uh, circles of the professionals, and to, uh, it's very pleasant to hear very specific issues. I would like to address those, and I am going to be very sincere with you in my response. The situation, uh, uh, the objective situation in Ukraine, I'm not, uh, I really do not believe uh, the in the changes of ratings when which we are being told about 30 positions up, 10 down, and the best rating which tells about the attitude of investors to this country, these are direct foreign investment. Investors are voting with the tool, which is their major working tool, money, money, and uh, people are walking, uh, are, are actually voting with brain, with uh, legs, uh, some people stay in the country, some people uh, leave the country, but the <laughs> investors are voting voting with their investments. The direct foreign investment per capita is less than $1,000 per Ukrainian. In Poland, uh, this indicator is higher by the factor of five. In Germany, uh, or it's, uh, it's higher by the factor of 15. And in Sweden and Norway, it's higher by the factor of 30 than in Ukraine. And this is the point uh, where we start, and we have to understand that, to have a serious discussion of how we can improve this. Ukraine is an economic dwarf uh, which is closed for the rest of the world. The situation with the domestic investors is not much better. We understand that the attitude to the domestic investor is even worse than to the foreign investor. And this is a real situation. It's not uh, you know, a piece of propaganda. I was impressed, I was shocked when I found out what, c what scope of uh, direct fine investment from US to Ukraine um, uh, is registered. The general uh, um, uh, uh, DFIs is 40 billion, and this is where we get these 900 dollars. So, if we divide 49 billion by 43 million, so this is 900 dollars per capita. So, uh, how much US is investing? 537 US dollars. 537 million. Chinese investment is uh, even. Uh, um, e even less, the biggest, uh, the strongest economic countries, superpowers, economic superpowers, practically uh, are not present as our investors in Ukraine, <laughs> as our economic allies. This does not comply with the strategic level of development uh, of our cooperation. We have to understand that. That's a starting point. Uh, what is the better indicator? What is, uh, um, and we are to talking that uh, after we start cooperating with the IMF, the private investors will come. This is the answer. So we are doing something wrong. And at this panel, people, investors are telling us very specifically what's being done and not properly and what should we do to improve this situation. On the one hand, it's a big problem. On the other hand, it's a huge opportunity. If we uh, c compare ourselves with Poland, um, um, as far as the uh, foreign investment is concerned, uh, well, we have similar population, air, land, uh, soil, level, level of education, culture. It's the same. We are somewhere at the same level. 25 years ago, we were even ahead of them. But if we compare ourselves with Poland, it m and if we catch up with them, it means that $200 million. $200 billion are going to be involved into the economy of Ukraine and also the domestic investment. Eight billion US dollars are being um, uh, transferred in the offshore companies from Ukraine. This is the first fundamental position. Secondly, I'm absolutely convinced that the success of this country and the success of all the reforms are counteracting corruption, uh, health, public health reform, development of uh, this country is related to the fact whether we will be able to put into the same boat the foreign investors and the domestic investors. Why so? You know the situation with the industrial, industrial 
uh, industrial timber. So we just we just introduced the norm that this unprocessed timber should not uh, should not be transported from Ukraine. The European bureaucrats uh, are against this move, but those uh, investors who have built uh, the plants in Ukraine, he has, or well, uh, they, they are supporting this uh, bill. And uh, well, Jochen Dunbeck has built a 25 million worth uh, plant in Ukraine, and he wants this moratorium uh, to be maintained. They came to work in Ukraine because this prohibition to export the raw timber uh, has been introduced. And the position of these investors completely coincides with our motivation to cancel these exports of raw timber. And we have to be in the same boat, so they will be looking with our eyes, uh, joint eyes, on the memorandum with the MF, and we have to make them our allies. And as soon as we have uh, U.S. Uh, Japanese investors in Ukraine, we are not going to have any Russian tanks in this territory. And this is a prerequisite of the security of the state, and this is the only way to, um, to break through. And uh, uh, today, during the forum, we have heard the recipes to grow by 8, 10% to stop being a raw material exporters and uh, to become the uh, country which produces uh, goods with the added value. Well, everybody um, um, agrees to that, but unfortunately, the government does not give uh, very um, you know solid recipes. Now, I'd like to share our vision uh, <clears throat> on what we are concentrating in the parliament at present to explain uh, this current situation. This is the premise but the industrial package of reforms, which was developed by our team. And actually, we, together with Oleg Lashko and uh, his team, have initiated this package. But the majority of these draft laws has been supported by all the factions and groups in Ukrainian parliament. I will just enumerate those. These are the priorities which give an um, opportunity to drastically change economic development of the country. Let's go from bottom, this, uh, bottom up this list. The free connection to the engineering infrastructure networks. Uh, yeah, um, our colleagues uh, remember, uh, uh, told about this, um, and Mr. Gumene told about this. At present, if one wants to build an enterprise, uh, the monopolist uh, provides the technical conditions for you, and then, uh, uh, and then actually exerts the bribe to, um, uh, to ease these requirements, then they, uh, you you have to build a substation and also pay 20% VAT tax to the state and give it as a gift to the uh, in, to the monopolist. And the investor pays four times for the same thing. This is corruption and these are the, this is exertion and this is not a market economy. And the draft law which we are offering, and by the way, it has been supported by the authors. We have uh, 30 co-authors uh, which represent all the factions of the parliament. And it uh, implements the uh, the <coughs> transparency about the existing capacities, and uh, the investor will see where the capacity is free, and whether there is an opportunity to link uh, the enterprise to the grid, and that will attack the corruption. And if the monopoly does not construct an investor constructs according to the technical requirements but the monopolist has to reimburse the costs of building this substation so this uh, this asset is needed by the monopolist and they have to buy it out if the investor builds it and uh, well uh, and this is the more market model. Who is paying for that? Uh, there is an investment component in the tariff, which is not being used uh, completely now. And it is not going to increase the tariff. According to our calculations, uh, maybe half percent of the tariff will, uh, will be an increase. Uh, half uh, percent of the tariff uh, will help to uh, combat the corruption and, inv and attract the investors to construct uh, the um, enterprises in the uh, industrial sector and agriculture cultural sector and this is a real revolution and it's one of the initiatives which we offer the second initiative uh, well uh, you're buying Ukrainian pay to Ukrainians you know the situation which happened in Kiev when Kiev bought uh, Polish cars instead of buying uh, 
the the carriages uh, in Zaporizhia or in Lviv, these cars are being uh, manufactured there. It, it's just an act of an idiot. You can imagine that, that the city pays uh, 2 billion grivna for uh, the cars which have been bought outside the country, but the Poles has offered the price which was 1,000 grivna uh, lower than the uh, the local Ukrainian manufacturers. We are going to cancel the results of this tender. Now we are submitting the draft law, and uh, well, the, this draft law is uh, uh, buy Ukrainian and pay Ukrainian. The uh, price privileges are being given to those who are using Ukrainian raw materials and Ukrainian labor. And these are in absolutely equal conditions. This American Polish company uh, exports Ukrainian funds, uh, takes a loan in the Ukrainian bank after the National Bank uh, uh, has reformed. Uh, the sector. So they will get the maximum level of the ratio of uh, localization and they will uh, and their bid will be uh, very low and if Ukrainian uh, company uh, uh, if uh, Ukrainian company is uh, just assembling uh, these uh, uh, products here it will have no advantage uh, uh, versus the uh, companies which operate in Poland and US. We export the commodities uh, out of this country. And uh, uh, well, uh, our economy is not developing and we are given loans like $600 million and then, um, and then um, cancel the moratorium for exporting of industrial timber. And the third uh, aspect is taxes. We believe that we should not simply decrease the tax rates for all the sectors, for all the economy. And the draft uh, uh, law, which is being pushed by the president's administration and the government, it's the uh, the tax on uh, the capital which uh, has uh, been uh, uh, has flown out of Ukraine. One thousand companies is paying 90 percent of the uh, profit tax. Is a hole for the state bu budget, which would not be able to. Uh, to bridge uh, without increasing the tax rate. We believe that it is necessary to give the, some tax incentives uh, for the industries and also for the innovative uh, projects. Uh, we have developed uh, the uh, draft law on industrial parks, uh, and Mr. Groisman today told that today several times uh, that he supports the development of the Ukrainian industry. So industrial parks is one thing, and also the to cancel the um, import uh, custom, uh, customs duties on the industrial enterprise uh, equipment. And also to, uh, to v VAT should be built in uh, um, small investments uh, over time uh, if the company uh, invests uh, into the development of their business. We have to demonstrate investment investors where we improve the business climate. This is our approach, uh, making loans less expensive. We understand that uh, at the ruins of the banking se sector, it is impossible to improve the situation with the cost of uh, loans, but we can launch the expert credit agencies. We have passed this law. We were uh, trying to get it passed in uh, the parliament for two years and the national bank was opposing it but this law has been passed and the president uh, signed it and the prime minister promised that we jointly are going to create expert credit agency it is going to uh, ensure expert uh, contracts and partially uh, reimburse the interest rates for the loans at later f phases it means that the machine builders uh, uh, airplane constructor buildings uh, and the heavy machine building and even uh, military industrial complex uh, will be getting lower loans and they will be able to win the tenders of the external markets. We are talking about a sensible import uh, substitution and stimulating the exports. And the last but not the least is liberalization of export transactions. Uh, because we know that there are a lot of regulations of the National Bank where are 
uh, not natural about the selling of uh, uh, the proceeds in foreign currency and also uh, the insurance of export import operations and the corruption tools which are being used in the corruption purposes these are uh, uh, the sanctions uh, the sanctions we are going to clean up uh, the house and uh, these draft laws are being registered in the parliament at present and a lot of authors are particip have participated in their development and I'm sure they are going to be passed so this is a toolkit we are offering everybody understands where we are moving what we want but how to do it well I would like you the entrepreneurial community support uh, these uh, initiatives and uh, please write to the parliament to the president uh, to the prime minister and to support uh, these uh, projects i'm going uh, to these drafts i'm going to place in the facebook the numbers of these initiatives and let us work on them together let us pass these 10 uh, draft laws and we will address 90 percent of all these issues which were discussed at this panel discussion we cannot unfortunately uh, uh, completely change the judicial core or the core of prosecutors but we are capable of pass these economic laws uh, if we consolidate our efforts we will be able to do it because in the Parliament we have already built an industrial lobby in the Parliament uh, these are not dreams these are not just fantasies and the plans of opposition yeah this has been initiated by our political party radical party but it is being supported by all the factions and groups they because it's outside of politics. It's the issues of development of industry which require this particular approach, the support. But we would like to do it quickly so that we can do it within tw a couple of months, but not several years. We have been working for two years on the development and passing the law for expert agency. Industrial parks, we only have brought it to the second reading, but it could have been done within the first three months of the work of the parliament. We have very specific plan, but we have to consolidate the efforts of the industrialists and uh, the society, business associations so that we uh, launch these realistic mechanisms for economic development and then the situation is going to drastically change. I'd like to emphasize that it is very important not only to pass uh, to uh, establish these new rules of the game but it's necessary to resolve the current issues but very important ones which were raised by Ukrainian metallurgical uh, sector, the uh, tariffs, uh, we would like to introduce the formula which will uh, uh, which will limit the indexation of the uh, tariffs and so that they would be more or less tied to the industrial prices so that the mechanism could be predictable. We also show how it is possible to buy the, tra the uh, cars for Ukrzeliznica uh, without increasing the tariff. We have to corporatize the Ukrzeliznica to sell some capitals and it will give like three billion dollars of US and we cannot we can not decrease the tariffs for three years. We are going to have the international partners and, and uh, anti-corruption policy is going to be uh, uh, introduced into Ukrzeliznica. They can issue the bonds, uh, take into account a new strategic a a shareholder. Yeah, that we can get these uh, long-term uh, uh, inexpensive funds. We should not embark, embark on, on the shortest possible road because they might lead us to nowhere. Thank you. Okay, so... For those issues which have been raised today, Yuri, you've been remembering your Venus experience with this connection to the networks. I remember that last year there was also a conference uh, in Venus. Uh, the name was Business in the Center of Ukraine. And just the same, uh, the year has passed, you were saying then that it is impossible to actually connect to this. So you have to be like this. So, this is uh, an individual situation. Actually, the, si the situation when the, uh, was solved, even in December, we are launching it. So, in the US, the company, like in Baltic countries, they are competing. So, why does this experience not work in Ukraine? why is actually this competition there so they're simply doing it like this and 
So what do we do with this? And uh, we are actually doing a survey every year. What prevents us from doing it without uh, it? I mean, every American business which works beyond the United States still works according to American legislation. What does it mean that if an American company gives a bride beyond the territory of the United States, still this company and its management they are criminal liable before the court of the United States for the actions that they did beyond the United States. I mean, here there's just legislation. And uh, I think that really this is the perception. And this holds many companies back for coming in here. Does it actually keep you back? As for the connection, okay, I'll be talking about that. Here, this is a very simple solution. This monopolist, they are in monopolies in all countries of the world. Actually, there is an energy package there in Europe, and according to this, there should be two suppliers of power, at least. And all this has been decided on the legislature, just take it, and who gives the big better conditions? Yes, but to do this, you have to limit Mr. Surkis, Grigorishin, and other monopolies. Okay, to decrease the threshold of going into business, yes. Here, I would like to answer the question that you asked to Mr. Kundarev and to comment here. I think that this is very important. And generally, what are the real anti-corruption mechanisms? How do we change it? Because the problem is very deep. I think that the only real medicine from corruption which will fundamentally allow us to overcome it. Yeah, no, that's not guillotine. No, no. Like in China, it's, uh, yeah, it's execution. But anyway, but really, jokes aside, you know what this is? This would be direct for investments. And I explain why. As the head of the committee, I constantly face this address from business station and, and all this, all this contraband and uh, bribery, all this. And uh, uh, like two uh, templates of behavior for local or like Turkish American they understand that in the worst case scenario they have more powerful channels of protection and secondly in the very worst case scenario they just leave Ukraine and for them this is not going to mean death of the business because they are global and therefore they are free so actually uh, but actually foreign investors are ready to go until the very end and they are ready to be transparent and to fight for this so I think that for now it is very useful to have this foreign direct investment because also anti-corruption because this is a fundamental decision here. And by the way, what uh, Mr. Gomeni was fairly saying about competition, all that one connecting to these networks, different experience in different countries, like in Israel, there is free connection to engineer networks like we propose in this industrial reform package. But there is this own specifics. For example, state networks and the generation, 75% is state. And state networks almost 100%. So here we have private monopolies. So this is simply competition. It is here complicated a priori. Okay, Yuri, then the question to you. How does it happen today, this connection to the network presently, at which my expense it is done, who invests in the Yes, the owner who um, appears in our market and tries to do that, there's always this condition that like, okay, you will get electricity and water, but you have to meet certain conditions. And these technical conditions is actually, it means the monopolies, they would develop their own income and some promising plans and and some also personal interest. And uh, in these indications, actually, it turns out that it's, uh, they mostly, they are not compatible, the brands with the innocents in Ukraine. And when we get uh, materials and paper, they might be delayed until a certain point, maybe given with certain load on, this is the load which I just lifted, and uh, it just goes and lies on the shoulders of each investor. And this investor, when they actually performed all obligations and got the equipment, like they are trying to do this. All these capacities can be some 
pump station if it is about uh, water supply. So they are trying again to give it to this monopolist. And the monopolist starts dictating again, like if you want me to use you and to help you, you're supposed to sell it to me to one foreign creator or to give it to me. But of course, if it's a gift, you have to pay. Okay, so this product, it just becomes less competitive then after such uh, financial load. Well, here, of course, this means that this uh, it influences the future cost. It could be square meters of the residents or maybe some like co coke or whatever. Of course, the cost uh, is decreased. So, so if we don't change this, uh, what sixty six seventy one, and then we'll w walk in this direction. We'll simply lose the investments and also and actually we'll just fall down down how our GDP is falling yes we have been seeing and actually what we have it here is that there is Wi-Fi like it exists you but you can't see it uh, so let's like export credit agency do you know you know what your extra price did exist successfully even before this export loan agency was a what about uh, your enterprise, your business? What would you change uh, for it to work? The question is very relevant presently, and uh, it's not by chance that I talked about it because it should have been created even in late August. There is already a position that it's going to be created. There is already budget envisaged for that. Uh, but the situation, why are we interested in it? Is because just recently, we had a request from a representative of the government, one of the Asian countries, who said that they want to, they have a project, uh, they want direct contract with us because we are the initial producer of tram carriages, they want to have this direct contract for a big amount. And the question was just about it from their side. There is a state company, which is a party to the agreement. But uh, do we have this company in the country which can speak out and sign this G2G contract? I mean, and after this, Ukrasiv Bank won't manage it, you're saying. Ukrasiv Bank, no, it won't. Uh, yes, they, at least now, it just doesn't comply with these functions of Exim Bank. It doesn't find its export, even though in the statute is written, or these functions as well, they are partially duplicated. They can't sign. So they it doesn't perform as function. What is the guarantee that EK is going to do that? And uh, as for foreign direct investment, I most I also agree with Victor, but I also think that today there is this wise thought today from our foreign counterparts that quite possibly it's very early that we enter WTO. Ukraine should have been ready for that. And it seems to me that for some development to start, this uh, uh, you we're going to forget about this word and actually stimulate the mechanism of reinvestment inside the country. Okay, Roman, what do you, how do you think, how can we stimulate export in particular of your product if we're talking about financing an expert? Well, generally, we are an export-oriented company, right, and we export about 75% of our products. And on export market, uh, we actually face some rather strict uh, uh, trade um, limits, like the limits that uh, range of countries. So it also uh, pertains to the U.S. and other countries. There is this limit in trade policy in the form of anti dumping and that. We so face facing such limits, we go and we ask, "Okay, guys, let's develop the production of uh, these metal products and." One of the projects is actually uh, is for supporting export sales and all that. How it can help with promoting their products. So actually, as an expert of this rolled metal, uh, as for systemic support of the state, we don't need it. We work on the global market. We've been doing it for 10 years. So we're exporting our 80% and all these issues, they have been solved in this or that way with trade financing, with loans, and 
uh, with all this. Okay, yeah, there's a great word soldier. Yes, it's been 10, 10 years of work of uh, finance experts who work with the Western bankers who finance and all that. So, yes, there are just there are some mechanisms which are worked out. So, for the company which goes to the export market for the first time, they have to do it afresh. They have to start the work they've been doing 10 years ago and they need some informational support where to go and uh, what to do, how it is done and actually some tools which actually don't exist. Well, uh, League Finance actually was referring to Mr. Kutarev just recently uh, but as for these sectors in Ukraine for inv foreign investments there was this and ATN. Actually, this is kind of the point of invest. There is no investment boom, right? And actually, uh, as for this selective approach towards investments and uh, new capacities into the field, if you have these priorities like that. Well, this attempt to make an agricultural super state from Ukraine. Well, I don't have anything against, but uh, still. And actually, this is agriculture is not the field that could take the country out of uh, this stagnation. I mean, start, of course, this people start from agriculture, pro economy, then industrialization, then some post-industrial development. So actually, jumping from agriculture into post-industrial society doesn't work. If you look at all those successful stories of Asian countries, which are dynamically growing, they all went through their capital accumulation, through construction of uh, industry and modernization and all that. So I think that we won't move away from black metallurgy anytime to Ukraine and some other countries where black metallurgy and its existence is justified. It is profitable to make steel in Ukraine. We have markets, we have great geographic locations, we have the necessary factors, entry factors. It's like raw materials and qualified workforce and uh, energy and all that. So, I mean, making steel in Ukraine is profitable. The thing is that it's very capital. Uh, we need long-term investments. I was saying that the following 15 years, 8 billion is just like a modest evaluation. Okay, and they could you tell me then, what about products with added value and with high added value? Absolutely, we see companies which work here, the Ukrainian companies. We also see member companies which work uh, with Titan. And today, for the comp there is a Boeing, they work for Bay Airbus as well. And they send uh, spare parts for engines. And actually, uh, there are also information technologies. We see that over 100,000 people are working in information technologies in Ukraine. This number can even grow to 200,000. It's just that if there is there are schools and universities that will be will train, there is it is there. I think that high tech, that's one of the directions that Ukraine is developing, and the potential is much bigger than we can even imagine. Okay, but what about industrial parks? Why don't we have it uh, really interesting? Okay, what about industrial parks? Uh, to for the industrial development to happen, we need some conditions. It was said readily, like if business is a virus, you have to create conditions for it to develop. Industrial parks are also one of the mechanisms how this process is can be stimulated. How do you put the vector in for the businessman to to do it? Actually, I would like to react to the previous issue that you ask, like for this networks and competitiveness of the product. You are saying how the current situation influences the competitiveness of the pro product. I'll just explain it to you. Just recently I was at Chernigiv and I had a meeting with local uh, entrepreneurs and just then we were registering this law draft 6671 and they were telling us the investor came into the region who wants to build a potato processing plant and they put up such cost of this official and unofficial payments for connection to networks. It's like tens of millions of grids that keep is not going to build this plan. So the answer to the question whether it influences the competitors of the product, no, it doesn't. Uh, and actually, we would like to also import this product from somewhere. And it's not just about losing some part, it's about getting zero, right? Okay, what 
So who watches the owner is going to do it and nobody is going to get there. So the problem is that some uh, nobody just even thinks this category. So they think about agent interest, somebody is going to get some bribe or whatever. And actually uh, what they're going to produce this energy is going to be cheaper because then it's just going to work another example for expand load agency i'm just going to explain in simple language how recently in the round of discussion that we had in the parliament i explained the general director of smart maritime group mr fedian explained it so they're building ships and the situation is the following that in the world this market is highly competitive about 85 percent are taken by three asian countries and we have our field but our field today is almost on zero why because he's saying okay we have the cheapest salary, we have lots of other attractive conditions, but when we build our own ship, it, it is more expensive than in Norway. Why so? Because they have loan of 10 2% interest we have in dollar and they have to take 12 to 14% for two years to build this ship. So therefore, in two years of construction, it's almost 30% or only the loan to be paid back on this huge cost. And they are suppo he's supposed to buy for 20 million euro. And as a result, the picture is the following that in Norway, this ship the built is go, it costs 35 million euros, and here is 37. So when there is tax export and loan agency, this loan is going to be much more uh, cheaper. It's going to, going to cost 37, it's going to be 32. Then we're going to win. So again, the difference is not for some percentage is to be or not to be so actually the export is raw material so how what is this the quality difference so it was said that okay it has been developed right and uh, and actually it's like a metallurgy as well because what is it like recently they were uh, mr kersner said stop um, renting out your brain like for three cents outsources simply buy their services like we sell grain and other goods so we have to become a producer in all fields not an exporter of the raw materials but a producer these are workplaces these are investments so as for industrial parks uh, as what we have it's actually uh, okay it's black holes uh, free economic zones is this some oligarch or is it somehow General offshores, which also have a corruption component. Well, you know, industrial parks are the best medicine from offshores. Offshores are just foreign shells where there are no jobs, of course, there is no pro real product produced. For Ukrainian, this doesn't bring anything. So, those who bring the money out of the offshores, they simply either hide them there or not to pay taxes. What is what are industrial parks? It is a territory of Ukraine where there used to be a production, but no, not now. Well, they create absolutely new production, new investments, and new workplace, new jobs, and new taxes. Yes, uh, this, so this is the difference. This is also a place where you could single out on the plant. You can make a new one in the field. You just ask those governors who, for example, here at Kiev International Economic Forums. Today, we, I had Mr. Gordiev coming up to me. And so they were saying, okay, so when are you going to do this industrial park? So we'd like to involve investors, and we need to show how not to simply say that we have decentralization is going to work well we should be saying that okay these are the attractive conditions the protection the taxes cheaper loans and internal market so this is the normal approach okay then now we already have just five minutes left let's spend this last five minutes so probably for blitz questions and answers if somebody has those then yes the microphone please Okay, my name is Masha and I have a question to Victor. What about Victor? Would you like to run for president? <coughs> Thank you for your question. <laughs> any any response is going to be absolutely unexpected, to be frank, no. And this is the second question, whether it's fair or not. We still have some time before the elections. And the Center for Development of uh, Market Economy, uh, the legislative initiatives which were put on the table here look very attractive, even optimistic, taking into account that some of them have been registered and have gone, been gone through the first reading. From from my own experience, I would like to underscore that inve a foreign investor will be interested to a certain extent, 
but when we are talking to them, American Turks or Chinese, they are impressed not by the legislation or connecting to the grid, but they are scared that the raw materials are being exported from the state on a mass scale and people are leaving the country and the country is subsidizing this. They. Um, pay for the higher education, people get higher education and then leave to uh, other countries. Uh, so what could be done so that Ukraine stops the export of raw materials and keep the brains here and so that the commodities and raw materials are being uh, uh, processed here? I can um, share two cases with you. It's uh, the moratorium for experts of uh, the um, raw timber, and uh, a lot of new enterprises have been created on the basis of uh, this uh, commodity. The second case, and uh, we have increased uh, by the factor of three, the uh, export tax for the scrap iron. And at present, we have saved $1 billion uh, sales uh, um, uh, for year. And uh, there are lots of jobs which have been created thanks to this law. We have to use sensible protectionism. Two questions, uh, uh, direct foreign investment as much as possible. They have to be involved. And how can we um, uh, attain 7 8% economic growth? It could be done through the direct foreign investment. And the second component we were not discussing today is privatization. 3.5 thousand state-owned enterprises in Ukraine. And this is the highest, biggest amount uh, in European countries. If the privatization is going to be three-dimensional and uh, transparent, the transparency of the company which is being uh, privatized, uh, so uh, who is the final beneficiary, that issue should be uh, transparent. And also the process uh, should be transparent. Who has an opportunity to buy these assets? Uh, the question of privatization uh, is a very important one. We discussed it at the Council of Reforms, and next year, if it is properly carried out, it will increase uh, the real uh, income and also will add to the GDP. The commodities. There are tariff uh, limitations in the world. Secondly, the uh, brain drain. If uh, the salaries in Ukraine are good, nobody is going to leave the country. And uh, to follow up, uh, to make the wages appropriate, I think that we have uh, to more or less concentrate the attention on the internal domestic manufacturer and the substitution for imports, simulation of exports, not only at the expense of the internal markets, but also expansion to the external markets. And innovation is the third, the third component, not only in the technological sense, but in social economic sense as well. We should not uh, be in a position of a weak country which is begging for uh, something, but we have to understand this at the uh, national level and the government level. Uh, brain drain um, and uh, the drain of human resources. In this world, uh, when we see that glo globalization uh, um, uh, is uh, overall and the mobility of, um, of uh, labor force uh, is increasing, people can move, especially if they know the language. And uh, actually, the countries compete for human capital. And everybody believes that the human capital is the basis of the business, of development. And if people can see that they can use their skills in a different country more efficiently, they go and work there. On the other hand, we should not be apprehensive of this. Ukraine is going to do some homework and keep up with the other countries and these people will come back from with the direct foreign investors, their capital, their know-how, and they will improve the economy of this country. I would like to give an example of our neighbors, Belarus. They, on the basis of uh, import of the materials which have been exported. They have created techno parks uh, under the president's program, and the government has developed uh, the um, the investment plan and they invested them into the companies. It was done by the government. But maybe the parliament should uh, exercise certain pressure on the government so to create these programs and uh, to give proposals how the uh, commodities could be used in Ukraine and then we will achieve the d development of economy and uh, the labor 
and the brains could be used in these companies. Thank you, everyone, for the participation. Even any well, to overcome a road, uh, well, one has to make the first step. We are talking about the three steps. We have not uh, come to the end of the road, but at least we have uh, today jotted down the road map and uh, the route. Thank you very much for participation.